Hey, thanks for joining me on Sunday, the 16th of October. It's uh, 4.42 in the UK, 10 o'clock or whatever it is, nearly 11 o'clock in Thailand, where I'm talking to you from. Uh, right, E-mini, let's have a look at the US stock markets. E-mini S&P, weekly chart, doesn't look that dramatic really when you look at it on the weekly chart. Uh, the week before last, we tested the 200-week moving average and my trend line, which goes back to 2011. So it's a very, very long uh, time period for this trend line. 12 years old, whatever it is, it's important, really important. And, and um, I expected it to be important this week. So actually, before I look at the daily chart, let's go to the, to the um, one hour chart, just to have a look at what happened before the CPI number came out. Now we had this shenanigans, which I suppose is typical of a market leading, uh, waiting for the release of an important piece of data. So up one hour down the uh, another hour, you know, some hours we were barely even moving uh, five points. Uh, it, it was really, for me, untradeable, you know, a great if you're scalping for a few points, but for me, not so good. Then we have this really weird situation where the index jumped 50 points or so, more even, uh, jumped higher just before the release of the CPI number, literally like a couple of hours before it started creeping up. It does make you wonder, doesn't it? if markets are manipulated at all and i guess if you wanted to manipulate this market that was your time a few hours before the release of the cpi number you know volumes are going to be thin anyone who needed to square up their positions had already squared them up anyone who wanted a position on was done and it was really just a waiting game for the biggest um economic release of the month so it, it does kind of look like someone decided to squeeze the market up um take out a few short positions or maybe even put their own big short position on before the number Anyway, uh, then, of course, the market plunged from 36.44 down to 35.20. So we plunged 124 points. Now, I was doing an FX Street webinar. If you uh, watched that and you were following me, uh, if you're one of the viewers on that one, we, we, we kind of experienced that together. Now, I did kind of expect a CPI number to be stronger. I was short index futures. I was actually short gold. I was even long the dollar against the New Zealand dollar. So this is all working out exactly as I expected. And we hit my targets on the downside as well. We hit my targets in the NASDAQ. We hit my targets in the S&P. I think we may have hit my targets in the Dow Jones. I have to have a look at that. Everything working out as I expected. There was absolutely nothing on the chart suggesting that we were going to have a bounce back. Nothing at all. Look, uh, OK, we had a 50% FIB at 3491, which I, which I use as a target. Where did we get to? What was the low? 3502. That was my target, but there was no price action around there. No, no particular swing highs or swing lows. There was no moving averages. There was no trend line. We were only just getting oversold uh, on the weekly chart. Nothing to suggest that we were going to have a strong bounce back at all. I kept my, I kept my positions on. I thought the gold would continue to plunge. I thought the stock markets would continue to plunge. Uh, maybe, maybe they would close near the lows of the day on Thursday, but no reason to expect this. In, look, even. Even the slow stochastic on the daily chart, no, not particularly oversold. The red line's not even in the oversold area. Black line just getting into the oversold area. Um, no, you know, the, the lines were, were widening out, which indicates to me that there's momentum to the downside. So uh, look, if you, if you saw this coming, please tell me, what did you see? Because I did not see it coming. Stick it in the comments box. I need to learn. Now, all the, I've, you know, I've, I've, we've all been trawling the, the internet and Twitter and everything else to try and find out what triggered this. Uh, it can, it, for me, it can only be a short squeeze. It can only be that the number wasn't that out of line. Maybe the, num maybe the reaction seemed a bit extreme and people decided that was it. They wanted to cover at least some of their shorts and, this, and, it, and it, the market was driven up. I just don't, it doesn't make any sense to me. S&P rallied, um, let me see, 100 and 79 points, 179 points. What's that? Something like four or five percent. Absolutely insane. Um, massive bullish engulfing candle. It destroyed me. I didn't see this coming at all. Took out the, th the three um, previous days of declines and halfway through Friday's enormously negative candle um, that, that when, when the market dropped 140 points, we, 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 we got halfway through that candle. Uh, just, just bonkers. And then we, you know, we retested this, the low of this candle back here. So when I woke up on Friday morning and I saw that, uh, you know, I wake up at whatever it is uh, around midnight uh, UK time, and I'd seen the, the, this bounce. It just seemed insane to me. Um, now, normally a bullish engulfing candle, you would say, right, that's it. The, the, uh, a, a one of this size as well. You'd say, that's it. It's over. The market's going up. 
we should have another big green candle today. But I just didn't see it happening. I just felt that we we're in a bear trend. This was an overreaction, probably a short squeeze. So I advised you to get short. Now it was a little bit tricky. If I, if I, I'm not going to lie. Where did we get to? Yeah, it was a bit tricky because we did overrun my level. Now my level was was actually around 30, 36.95, 37.05. So I didn't expect us to spike up to 37.33. Um, that's the 500 uh, hour moving average that we tested there. So it, I really did expect um, 30, I, really, I need to show it you on the four hour chart, one second, stacking these charts up here, but just give me a second, I'll show you the four hour chart. Okay, so it was really only the four hour chart that gave me this idea that we should be getting short. And unfortunately we did over spike which was bloody irritating to say the least. Now, we had moving averages, 100 period moving average. We had um, a confluence of uh, Fibonacci um, resistance around 36.95, 37.05. Um, annoyingly, this little spike up, look, and it was such a horrible spike because, go back to the hourly chart, um, it didn't last long. On the hourly chart, you can see it literally was up one hour and then immediately reversed. So, uh, it, it it is difficult to trade these markets. They, the liquidity must be drying up. It must be thin to be getting these crazy moves. 60 point move before the CPI number, 100 and whatever it point move it was, 140 point move on the CPI release. And it was only out by 0.1%. You know, I was happy to see the move, but I didn't cover my shorts. Straight up, you know, an insane 5% recovery or more actually by the time we peaked on Friday. And then, of course, another huge drop. Where do we get to? 37.33 down to 35.91. So that's a 100 and 140 point drop. Whew. Yeah, 150 points here and 150 points there. The S&P is absolutely all over the place. So all I can see is that, that on, 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 when, when big news is coming out, the liquidity completely dries up. And I don't think there's a lot of liquidity in there anyway. So it's thin, volumes are thin, the markets are moving dramatically. And I'm wondering if this is the beginning of this sort of volatility, this is going to continue. You know, we know what's going on with the bond markets and we know that time, uh, the financial markets are struggling. So the fact that we had this big red candle on Friday indicates to me that the bears are still in control of this market. But we, we closed bang on that trend line that I just showed you on the weekly chart and the 200 week moving average. So the question is, do we start to settle below 35.90, continue down, retest Friday's low, break it, and then continue a move to the downside? Or do we hold this and maybe the bullish engulfing candle does take effect this week and we do recover? So, well, it is all a question of, uh, of 3,600. Do we hold above it or below it? Do we, do we, do we then uh, break above 3,700 and, and stay there? Because that's your fib level. That's your trend line, which I thought was going to hold on Friday and it didn't initially. We spiked above it. Um, and then and then we reverse. So it 3600, 3700, 3500. Those are the levels to watch. Uh, there is nothing else to say on it. There is. We're not massively oversold, and we shouldn't. We should be massively oversold. If I'm thinking about a, a turn in the market, it's really this this candle is bothering me because it is so positive. But then you know we wiped out at least half of the gain on Friday. So I think I'm going to lean to to the bear side. I mean, the fundamentals are just so negative. You know, the, the Fed is going to raise rates to four and a half, five percent, whatever it's going to be. They're, I don't see how they're not going to do that, especially with, with the number out on Thursday. Yeah, they're not going to deviate. This talk of them pivoting, if there's a slight hint of a weakness in inflation, it's not going to happen. Inflation is not going to die that quickly, uh, not with interest rates that are just way below the rate of inflation right now. It, 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 the economy is still growing. There are, well, certainly jobs are still growing. Wages are still growing. There is no indication at all that inflation is about to collapse. When you look at the Nasdaq chart, this, this just looks negative. Again, don't know why we bounced back. 61.8% mm, FIB, I had at 10,500. Yes, it hit my target. Did we hit it? Yeah, we did. So that was my target. There's no reason, there's no price action, there's no, there's no trend line, there's no moving average, there's nothing else. To We're not even that oversold again, you know, on the weekly chart. Daily chart, did we get that oversold? Mm, slightly more oversold than we did on the S&P, but would I be buying into a long position there? All right, maybe I should have covered shorts. I know some of you did down there. I know, I know that you were really happy with the target that I set. So well done to you. Um, again, it was the four hour chart that, get, that, that made me suggest that we get short on Friday. And if you did do that, well done. I'm really happy that that level works for you. Where are we? There we go. 
uh, nice and easy four hour chart, uh, 100 period moving average, nice little trend line again, same as the S&P and the 23.6% Fib and actually the 50 period moving average as well. What a beautiful level there at 2, 11200, 11300. The high of the day was 11.253. Oh, look at that. Absolutely bang on to the nail on that 23.6% fib. So if you shorted that, that was a beauty. We got a little bit overbought uh, on the four hour chart there. Um, so I, I certainly feel more, com oh look, 200 um, hour moving average also on the, uh, on the NASDAQ there. Lending weight to that uh, resistance level. Um, 200 um, week moving average comes in at 11,224. We've closed well below that now. A drop down, break below 11, uh, 10,500 would be the next sell signal, obviously. That's fairly clear. What are we getting from the candles? Yes, bullish engulfing candle, but that didn't work. We've got this big red candle. So this, this looks more negative than NASDAQ. It looks like it uh, will continue to head to the downside. It's only the S&P, which has looked stronger than the other two markets anyway that is giving any inclination that we could see a recovery, but I don't see it. Let's have a look at the Dow Jones. It's been really difficult, really choppy. Previous low, uh, uh, the, uh, halfway through the year, 29,741. Bang on the 23.6% FIB, which is at 29,664. Uh, shorter term FIB at 29,671. So the 29,700 area or 750, 650 area, very important. 200 week moving average, again, very important slightly above that. I think it's the 29,782. So this spike up back up through here was, was a surprise. Uh, no question about that. On Friday, we have closed bang on the level, 29,700. So right on, on the support, a bit like the S&P, right, right at the important level. So the question is, do we head lower from there or do we, do we see a strong recovery? Personally, I think we, I think we go lower. I'm just having a look at the short term, shorter term charts. That trend line held. The levels are not so clear in the, in, in, in the, in the Dow Jones. Noting that the 50 week moving average is just about to cross below the 100 week moving average, which we have not had on the weekly chart. Well, look, it kissed it here back in beginning of 21. Tried across a little below, but didn't last for long. So I'm going to call that a kiss of the 2016. Um, so the last time the um, 50, a week moving average crossed below the 100 week moving average was 2008 global financial crisis interesting eh we're just crossing below it now and we definitely have the momentum for the 50 uh, week moving average to, to to cross below it and and head down you know you can see how aggressively that 50 uh, week moving average is is turning down a little and probably even more aggressively than here uh, coming from a greater height you see that you know that's really interesting isn't it this could literally just be the beginning of the down move and we could be heading, well, imagine if we got down to 18,000. We could easily do it, easily do it. Um, what else, what else? Uh, when, we, when we had the bullish crossover there back in 2010, of course, that was the start of the rally. So the um, 50 and the 100 give quite clear signals. To revisit the NASDAQ now. Uh, the short-term charts in the Dow Jones don't say much. Uh, need to revisit the NASDAQ. Now look, 50 from a great height, collapsing and this is what it's going to look like on the dow jones of course isn't it next week um 50 collapsing through the 100 with the 100 week moving average is only just on the turn you know again this could really just be the start of a, of, of this uh, bear market when you look at these moving averages it's only the weekly chart it's not the monthly chart yes there is a delay but the 50 day moving average, 50 week moving average has not been below the 100 week moving average since the global financial crisis um why don't i just open this out for you and for me there we go look again not from a dramatic drop and that was and this was a, a, a huge collapse in the stock market huge and yet it wasn't such a big so dramatic as we have seen just now uh the the the, the, the crossover has not been so dramatic uh, but again throughout the whole bull run from the um internet crash you know the whatever the, the internet bursting of the internet bubble the 50 week moving average never crossed below the five, the, the 100, never. And now, uh, through that whole rally from 2009, the glo from the global financial crisis, all the way through, no matter what the market threw at us, even through the um, pandemic, the 50 didn't even touch the 100 for the NASDAQ. So the fact that we've crossed below it, I think, is very significant. About this last week with the 200. Um, uh, we, a day moving average is just across below the, the 100 uh, about a month ago. 
uh, sorry, the 200 period, the 200 day moving average crossed below the 500 day moving average about a month ago. Again, you know, could be just the start of something. When when the 100 crossed below the 200, not only did it make a good resistance level, but it certainly did trigger one hell of a move to the downside. Um, a quick look at the DAX, which is just confusing. I don't know why the DAX is holding up so well. It sounds like the German economy is in a right old state and is going to have a horrible winter, but the DAX is holding up. So uh, maybe it's because the euro is so much weaker than the US dollar. Um, maybe that's helping the index hold up. I know the FTSE doesn't seem too bad either, but we are clearly in a bear trend. But you know, this chart is just confusing. I can't really give you anything clear. You know, I, I would imagine if the US stock markets fall, which of course is, I think they probably will, then this will get dragged down. Uh, the thing that, that could be holding it up is the 500 a week moving average. Okay, 11,760. Um, did we get a particularly bullish candle? No. Look, this is a mess. I'm, I'm going to focus my particular trading on the US markets, which I think are, are a lot clearer. And I don't know why this is holding up so well. Okay, that's it for me for the stock markets for this week. I hope that's helped. Please uh, like, subscribe, share. Please, uh, I love your comments. Uh, tell me what you think about where the stock markets are going and what kind of indicators you're looking at and then join me next week. Uh, please do have a look at my website as well if you're not a subscriber already. Have a look at what I do, what I offer, the daily packages, the daily technical analysis and signals packages. Uh, they're a bargain and if you want some free stuff go to my blog. Where is my blog? Please load. There's daytradeideas.co.uk forward slash blog. I do post some of my analysis in here for free um, quite regularly, a couple of times a week at least. And you'll also get links to my webinars and uh, and there is some loads of educational stuff in there as well um just so please just go and have a look okay that's it i'm going to get on and do a video on the forex markets now um have a great week trading good luck